It's unboxing time. Car parts from Summit Racing. It's the best time of the day. All my money goes to Summit. see what we got here if I don't stab myself. I don't know how people do these videos where they unbox stuff with one hand. I'm terrible at it. Oh, yes. Here we go. It's fan time. Boom. Let's take a look at what we got. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. What else we got? Smaller package over here. Grab the knife, trying to cut myself. Oh yeah. Not easy to do. All right, let's talk through what we've got. Boom. Boom. All right, guys, let's talk about the goodies that are about to go on my truck. Okay, so just for a heads up, um, I'm probably gonna make this video into two parts. Um, the first part of the video, we're just gonna kind of talk about what I'm doing, the parts I'm using, some things to consider um, if you're doing an electric fan conversion. This will be my second time doing one. I've done one once before on another truck. Um, so I've got a few lessons learned from that and we'll go through everything you need. Now, what you see here isn't everything you need, and I'll talk about that in a second, but it's a good start. So um, hopefully pay attention. I'm gonna go over some key things and things to consider when you're ordering all these parts because sometimes you think, I just get the fans, that's it, or I get the fans, the wiring, and that's it, and that's not everything necessarily to consider. So we'll go over all that in a second, but let me talk you through um, what I purchased first. So the big one here obviously is the shroud and um, electric fans. So I picked them up from these folks right here, Dorelli. Um Super cool, I spoke with them on the phone. I told them what I was doing, my application. I took some measurements and um, they were able to size a fan correctly for me. Um, so this is the dual fan setup. This should pull about 4,000 CFM. Um, it's correctly sized for my radiator. And I think it's gonna solve, you know, hopefully all the cooling issues that I have, which from speaking with them, sounds like it wasn't my radiator was undersized so much as it was just improper shrouding. So um, obviously once you get the fans, you really wanna go ahead and get yourself a, um, some relays uh, because to do this safely, you, you don't wanna just go straight from the battery through a switch you want to be able to control them off the thermostat. Um, you want them to come on at different temperatures. So by doing this, it's the safe way to do it. There's other options. Um, you don't have to go to them for the relays. And I, and I will say there's probably ones that are, you know, better uh, weatherproof than this. This is kind of like the standard GM style um, harness. But nonetheless, I think this will work fine. And from an instruction standpoint, this matches up perfectly with that. All the wire colors are gonna be the same when you look at your instructions. Um, so that makes it pretty easy. So speaking of instructions, when you look at the instructions for this whole thing and looking at the comments on Summit Racing, one of the things I noticed was um, they mentioned it doesn't come with fuses. So they talk about using two 30 amp fuses, one for each fan, it doesn't come with that. So you could pick up a very simple inline fuse kit from like an AutoZone or Pep Boys or something like that. Um, I chose to do something a little bit differently. So these are like weather pack style, you know, connectors that you can mount and then unhook. And this is from American Auto Wire. Um, here's the uh, part number. I've used American Auto Wire um, on other kits and they've got like really good instructions. I've already got the crimpers. So if you didn't have the crimpers, you could probably go with something cheaper and just solder them in line. Um, but by doing this, I won't have an extra um, like solder or crimp connections. That was part of my reason for doing that. The other part is you can mount this firmly. So I'll mount them next to where I mount those. And that way, if I need to pull a fuse out, I'm not yanking on all the wiring. So I'm just trying to think of a way to make this um, a little more stout. So obviously you need to get two of those because you have two fans. So other than like miscellaneous extra wiring you may need, that's probably 50% of the battle. 
Now let's walk outside and let's talk about one more often overlooked part when you're swapping to electric. It's a beautiful day outside. Hopefully I'll be able to do some of this this weekend. Um, let's talk about one more thing here that's often overlooked. Boom, that guy, your alternator. So um, when you go from a mechanical fan to an electric fan, the amp draw on your system is going to be um, way higher. So right here, what I have, and you can look this up online, there's different styles of GM um, alternators. This one's remanufactured at some point, so it's not the original, uh, but there's different styles. This is the 12 SI style, which is like, I'll call it the second generation of internally regulated um, alternators. And this is the one set up for a serpentine instead of a V-belt. Um, but otherwise, it's similar to what you'd see in a lot of different cars and trucks. Now, the problem is this is probably only rated. And I don't, I called Delco Remy to try and get the, the amp rating. I don't have the exact amount, um, but it's somewhere less than 90 amps. I'm guessing about 70-ish. When I install my new fans down here, they draw 25 amps each. Um, I spoke with Holly and my my EFI, uh, the fuel pump requires 10 amps and at max output, the EFI requires six. So you are getting really close to that stock rating. That doesn't take into account things like, oh, I don't know, headlights, a stereo, any other auxiliary items that you have running, the ignition system. I mean, so basically when you do an electric fan upgrade, you are gonna wanna upgrade your alternator. Um, what I was told from, um, when I was told from Torelli was they recommend a minimum 130 amps. So I went to Summit Racing, I'll post a picture. I'm getting a 150 amp alternator, um, which should supply more than enough. And then if, like I said, if I wanna add a stereo or something, I've got plenty of extra, you know, juice to do that. A um, couple other things to talk about. Oh, let's talk about diodes real quick. Okay, if you're not familiar with what a diode is, um, this is a diode. So I had an issue when I installed my Holly. Um, basically, I would shut the engine off and it was back feeding the ignition system such that uh, I'd turn the car off, the ignition off, and it would keep running. It wouldn't run well, but it would try to keep running. So I looked up online and found out that this old alternator, um, I don't know if it's the way the truck's wired or what, but basically it was back feeding the system. So what a diode does is it's, it's essentially like a check valve like you would have in you know plumbing, but for electricity. The only reason I'm mentioning this, you really shouldn't have to do that, um, but when you look at the instructions for the relay, it'll talk about a green wire, which is used for the AC. So you can have the fans come on when the AC comes on. Now, I don't have AC, but it does state in there to install a diode. It's very small, it's only in the wiring diagram and not in the instructions, um, but it's something that you probably would wanna do if you're gonna follow their instructions verbatim is to install a diode, they're real cheap. Um, this one only looks special because it came as a pigtail, but normally you could just solder one in, um, in line and you'd be fine. So that's pretty much it. Um, in the next video, we will go over the full installation. I'll do a time lapse, how we're going to mount everything. But now you get an idea of what you need to do an electric fan conversion on a C10 or an old car. Okay, one more thing. Um, I just want to say I just started an Instagram. Uh, it's truck and roll 989. So check that out. I'll have more, you know, updates. I'll show you some of my old trucks that I had. I had a 65 C10 um, that I did a bunch of stuff to. I'll show you some pictures of that. Um, some of the other cars I used to have. I had a supercharged uh, C6Z06, made over 700 horsepower, blew that motor up, um, had some Mustang, and, like that. and who knows, maybe we'll get um, some more, uh, you know, some more project cars for the channel. I'm actually thinking about um, my wife and I tracking our ND Miata. So in order to do that, I've got to install a roll bar, and because I'm so tall, um, got to lower the seat. So I might do a video on that, maybe set up some other playlists. So if you're interested in other car modifications, but maybe not into the old truck so much, but I'm assuming most of you are, but if not, uh, check out those videos. Um, and then I got to figure out maybe like a GoPro setup um, so we can start checking out the, uh, the track days. Luckily, we've got a local track here. So um, between that and then my wife's other car, we'll probably take them both and, um, and get some track times and some track time would be cool to check out. So uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And like I said, check me out on Instagram, truckandroll989. See you next time.